All right, why don't we go ahead and illustrate how these apply to some of the example problems. The first one will be um, on the easier end of the spectrum, but I have f of x is equal to x, which is kind of common, and I gave you a particular interval going from minus 2 to 2, so it's a symmetric interval. I want you to expand this in a so Fourier series, okay? One thing I will need to check first is whether this f of x is equal to x is odd or even, because that's going to make my life easier, f of x is equal to x. So how I analyze this is, if you remember, I put minus x to it over here and see whether I'm going to get plus x or negative x. So I'm going to get negative x, right? Because if you remember the plot of, you know, y is equal to x, it's like this. So it's, um, you know, first and the third quadrant is being occupied, so you're going to get a sine series. So if you remember uh, from the previous conversation that I had, this simply indicates that my a0, I don't have to worry about it. If you go ahead and calculate it, you're going to get 0. Same thing with a n. I don't have to worry about it. The only thing that now I have to worry about is the b n. And the b n formula was established to me this way: two by p integral zero to p, not minus p to p, um, f of x times sine and pi x by p dx. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, what is p over here? And it is kind of straightforward, right? You know, it's going from minus two to two. So in this particular case, I will have p is equal to two. So if I insert p is equal to 2 over here, these cancel, right? And I insert 2 over here, which I can't do much about it at this point in time, all right? And obviously, I'm going to insert f of x is equal to x. Okay, it doesn't seem too bad compared to what we have been dealing so far, okay? But it requires me to do uh, integration by parts. So I'm going to call u is equal to x, so du will be equal to dx. Then I'm going to call dv is equal to sine and pi x by 2 dx, right? And my v will be, let's be careful, 2 by n pi uh, negative cosine of n pi x by 2. Okay, then let's plug it in and see where it's going to take me. dn will be uv. So that's going to be minus 2x by n pi times cosine n pi x by 2 which I need to relate from 0 to 2, plus integral of um, negative, negative cancel, so I get positive, 2 by n pi, cosine of n pi x by 2 dx. And that doesn't look too bad to take the integral off. So from here, actually, why don't I just evaluate this while I'm at it, right? So when I insert, first I'm going to insert 2, right, then minus 0. When I insert 0 here, you see this is multiplied by 0, so that's going to be gone. So I only need to insert 2 over here. Minus 4 by n pi, right, 2 times 2. Cosine of, uh, well, I insert 2, so you see uh, when you insert 2 over here, so these two cancel, get, I get cosine n pi, okay? I'm going to leave this as is for now because I know cosine n pi is minus uh, 1 to the power of n. Plus, well, I can take this 2 by n pi outside. And when I take the integral of cosine, I'll get another one of 2 by n pi, right? So it becomes a square of it. And I get myself this time around a sine n pi x by 2. And again, this needs to be related from 0 to 2. So let's go to bn. So this becomes minus 4 minus 1 to the power of n by n pi plus 2 by n pi squared, which is common in both of these terms, so I'm going to get sine of, and I insert uh, 2, I'm going to get n pi, minus, I'm going to get sine of 0, right? Sine of 0 is 0. Sine of n pi is 0. Nice. Nice. So the second term is gone. Okay? So then what I will do is, uh, one minor trick is this. Um, can I write this this way instead of a negative sign? n plus 1. Did you see what I did? Let's complete and ask you. Um, did you see this? What, what's happening? So this is my, minus 1 to the power of 1, which is this, right? So I can write it this way for, uh, you know, brevity. But at the end of the day, when all said and done, my f of x will be this. Summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity of 4 minus 1 and plus 1 by n pi sine of n pi x by 2. That's kind of it for this particular um, expansion. Okay, I'm back with the, another question in here. So now this is a piecewise uh, function. So I have uh, minus 2 to minus 1, minus 1 to 1, 1 to 2. So in these kind of cases, my recommendation is, although it's kind of simple at this point in time, 
and many of you have seen it, but for consistency purposes, I will go ahead and write this minus 2, minus 1, 1, and 2. Then if I go ahead and uh, write this uh, in here, it's going to be like a 1, right? Let's say this is 1, okay? So it will go to 1, and then this will be 0, this will be 0, and this will be 1. So what does this mean? What, what is this function? Is it symmetrical? Yep, it is symmetrical, and it is even, so for that reason. So in a good or in a bad way, I get rid of bn, but I still need to do a0, a, a, n. But as you know, a0 is not a big deal. So let's start the process. a0 will be equal to 2 to p. Now as this is symmetric, I will just simply focusing on 0 to 2. Okay, um, f of x dx, and as you know, p is 2, right? It's very clear. So I don't have to worry about the section where it goes from 0 to 1, right? Because that's 0. So I will only look at from uh, 1 to 2. I mean, I can write 0 to 2, but 0 to 1 component will be out. And that will be dx, right? So that's going to be x, uh, 2 to 1. Well, what is 1, right? You know, 2 minus 1, 1. Okay, I told you it was not going to be that difficult, right? Let's do the an part 2, 2 by p, same thing, 0 to p, f of x, this time around cosine n pi x by p, dx. So if I put the values in, p is 2, we know that, again this is 2 as well, f of x is, depends on where I'm at, but I will only focus on, uh, you know, 1 to 2 because 0 to 1 will vanish. So if I write it this way, it's going to be 2 by 2, which is 1, integral. 1 to 2 cosine of n pi x by 2 dx. So if we take the integral of it, what I will get is, actually it's easier than the previous one, 2 by n pi sine n pi x by 2, and then I have to evaluate this obviously from 1 to 2, so let's insert it, 2 by n pi, I'll get my sine n pi, right, when I insert x, x n pi, minus sine and pi by 2. Okay, let's take a look what's going on in here. We know this, we have visited this mean time, sine and pi is gone. So when all said and done, I will get my n, a n to be minus 2 by n pi sine of n pi by 2. Okay, so that's what my a n is. And if I go ahead and write my uh, Fourier series expansion, it's going to be a0, which is 1, right? 1 by 2 plus summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity and I will have my a n which is minus 2 by n pi sine n pi by 2 times cosine of n pi by 2x, right? I think that's it, right? Let's be careful. Yeah, that's all I have for this particular case as well. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and solve another question. This seems a little bit off because there's an x and then I'm multiplying by the absolute sign of the x. So I draw here the coordinate axis. What I want to do is I want to assess, um, let's say that I have from minus 1 to 0 in the negative range. What am I going to get? Absolute sign of x will be minus x, right? So then I will get minus x squared. If I have uh, 0, x, 1, then I will get myself. Absolute sign of x will be positive x, so it will be x squared. So if I plot this, it's going to look like this, and over here it's going to look like that. You see? It's odd, okay? This is odd. So this is a sine expansion. So I only need to have the bn. That's good. You know, a n is equal to a0 is equal to 0, right? So that's good, good start. So I'm happy as the starting of this question. So we go here, 0 to p, f of x, sine, and pi x by p dx, okay? So p is what? 1, right? So in this particular question, so this is 1, this is 1, 2, and the sine f of x is equal to x squared. Why? Because I am looking at 0 to p, and p is 1, right? So this is going to be 0 to 1 in this range. This is it. This range is already incorporated because there's a 2 here, all right? Anyways, let's uh, rewrite this a little bit nicely. So I'm going to get my bn to be 2 times integral of 0 to 1 x squared sine of and pi x dx. Oh, I see you uh, making comments. Oh, you have to say this, you, do you have to say this dv, the integration by part? Yep, that is right. U will be x squared, so du will be 2x dx, and dv will be sine 
n pi x dx and from here I will get my v to be 1 by n pi, right? Um, well, minus cosine of n pi x. So if I plug it in, I will get myself 2 x squared. Where is 2 coming from? Well, up here, right? There's a 2 here. That's where it's coming from. 2 x squared by n pi nu v cosine of n pi x. Okay, let's not forget the negative, right? I have a negative in front of me, so there needs to be a negative here. And I have to go it from 0 to 1, plus this 2 by n pi, and then I have 0 to 1, I have 2x cosine n pi x dx. So I was not able to get rid of this uh, x, so I'm going to call this u, I will call this dv, so from here u will be equal to x, so du will be dx, to v dv will be cosine n pi x dx. So from here, my v will be 1 by n pi, very similar, sine n pi x, right? Okay, let's plug it in and see what, what it, where it is taking me. So the first term is, I'm going to leave this as 2x squared by n pi cosine n pi x. And I'm going to write this from 0 to 1 plus I will get 4 in pi square sine and pi x. Okay, let me explain where it's coming from. U times V. Alright, so why is there 4? Well, because there's a 2 here, there's a 2 here that becomes 4 and pi square. Why? Because there's an n pi over here and there's an n pi over here, right? So that's what the first term is about. So then minus, again, this needs to be able from 1, 0 to 1, 4 pi and pi and then I will get integral of um, 1 over n pi sine n pi x dx, right? Let's look at this. What is going on over here? I will let this uh, the, the last term down the road, okay? Well, if I put x is equal to 0, you can see this is 0 times, so that will be gone, okay? But if I put uh, equal to 1, then I will get uh, minus 1 by minus 2 by n pi cosine of n pi. And we know this, this is minus 1 to the power of n. So when all said and done, I can change this a little bit, 2 by n pi, and I will have minus 1 to the power of n plus 1. Remember that? Let's look at the second term over here. Um, so this will be 0. Okay, let me explain why it's coming. When I put 1 over here, what will happen is this is going to get sine of n pi, which is 0. Then I will have sine of 0, which is 0. So that term drops out. Okay, so that's good. Let's look at the last term. So that will be 4 by n pi square automatically before I take the integral. Then I, when I take the integral, I will get a negative uh, cosine. So it will be positive. And I'll get one more. So it's going to be a, a n pi cube, right? n pi cube. And it's going to be cosine of n pi x. And I have to evaluate this from 0 to 1. One more line. So I will get myself 2 minus 1 and plus 1 by n pi plus 4 by n, n pi cube. Okay, when I put cosine, uh, x is equal to 1, I will get cosine n pi, which I'm taking a little bit of a shortcut. You see that this is minus 1 to the power of n, minus when I put x is equal to 0, I will get myself cosine of 0, which is 1, right? So this is pretty much what the bn is. I don't think I can do any more, uh, you know, I can take parentheses of 1 over n pi, but I don't think that's going to matter too much, okay? But uh, when all said and done, I will have my fx uh, Fourier series expansion for this particular case to be, well, I'm going to repeat uh, what I write uh, up there in terms of what bn is. Then I have 4 by m pi cube. I have minus 1 to the power of n minus 1 times sine n pi x by p is 1. That's it. So this wraps up this uh, exercise as well. Thank you for watching this. I'll be back with another caveat about this particular approach that we've been doing.